Hi there, my name is Timmy and this is my sixth year teaching English. I decided to start this podcast to help new teachers. I'm planning to talk about building an online presence for your services, creating educational resources and taking care of yourself, juggling all that comes with being a teacher in the 21st century classroom. Today's topic is building rapport with your students, the second part of a two-part mini-series. 12 tips to build rapport with your students. The first six tips were number one, call your students by name. Number two, care about your students' interests and aspirations. Number three, show a sense of humor. Number four, be there for your students outside of class. Number five, be respectful. Number six, be humble. So let's continue with number seven. Number seven, be aware of your body language. You might or might not be aware of your body language. Your students pick up on it either way. Body language is a powerful tool that may engage your students or discourage them from learning. Ways to keep your students alert include maintaining eye contact, using mime and gestures to help retain new vocabulary, or to encourage and praise students. A simple smile smile goes a long way. Be mindful of nonverbal cues that send a negative message. Do you often fidget? Are you constantly checking your phone? Do you slouch in class and seem indifferent to what your students are saying? You might want to change these patterns of behavior. Quick fix. Pick one thing at a time and work on it. For example, put a sticky note on your laptop reminding you not to slouch. Get rid of distractions. Turn off your notifications or put your phone away so you aren't tempted to check it every 10 seconds. Number 8. Enjoy teaching and be passionate about what you teach. Being overly enthusiastic and optimistic all the time is emotionally draining and might be perceived as fake. However, if you seem content and your students think that you genuinely enjoy teaching them, they will also find joy in learning. If you are dissatisfied with things that you have the power to change, change them for the better. Quick fix. If you feel a little bit down, try to remember why you got into education in the first place. Keep a box of treasured little gifts, drawings and notes your students got you to remind you this is all worth it. Number 9. Be consistent. Organization, structure and consistency are gifts that keep on giving. Being organized takes effort. But once you've put your systems in place, you can rely on them every day. To achieve the best results, re-evaluate your practices once in a while and modify them if necessary. Being consistent also means that you should keep your word. Your students need to know that you are a trustworthy and reliable person. Trying to make your students meet deadlines and be responsible defeats its purpose if you are absent-minded. Quick fix. When did you last revise your organizational systems? If it's been a while, brush up on them. Do you have your course policies in writing? Explain them to your students. They have the right to know what standards they are held to. Number 10. Be relatable. You aren't infallible and you aren't a person to be feared. You are a mentor whose role is to guide your students and make expert knowledge accessible to them. To put your ideas across easily, limit specialized language and explain things in everyday terms. If you relate the information to your students' lives, they will remember it with ease. If you give examples from your private life, your students will get to know you better. Bringing up spare time activities, the movies or books you enjoy could be 
nice ways to connect with your students without giving too much away about your personal life. Quick fix. Use simple words. Give personally relevant examples from your life or your students' lives. Number 11. Don't be too hard on yourself or your students. Some days are better than others. The sooner we accept that there are problems hindering our students' progress and performance, the better we will feel about ourselves. Your students are allowed to have a bad day and so are you. To put things into perspective, try to recall your own experience with great teachers. Chances are that you remember the values they represented and the way they made you feel. It's not about being perfect all the time, but helping others succeed. Quick fix. To justify not being a perfectionist, think about inspiring educators in your life. Number 12. Foster active learning and interaction. I'm sure that you want your students to be active learners. One of the possible ways to do so is to think in terms of teacher talking time, TTT, and student talking time, STT. Teacher talking time is the time you spend talking in class instead of your students. Student talking time is the time your students spend talking. Pair work and group work with you monitoring these activities are the most self-explanatory ways to give your students more talking time. Quick fix. Limit teacher talking time. Agree with your students on having a set collection of gestures to substitute oral instructions. That's it. Thank you for being here today. I hope you come back for the upcoming episodes of this podcast. Bye.